This podcast is part of the Podcast Arcade Network. Welcome to episode 30 of Paranormal Dads. I'm your co-host, Eddie. I'm Andy. I'm Pat. Join us as we go in search of the world's monsters, myths, and mysteries right here on Paranormal Dads. It's a milestones uh, episode, guys, huh? Man, it, it is. It's Goodbye, awesome twenty. To be here. Got our friends over. Got our boxed wine. We're sad. <laughs> <laughs> we're done. We're done partying. We're time to settle down. Time to settle down now, guys. Get serious about things. <laughs> we had a huge blizzard this weekend. What? It wasn't oh. really huge. It was just a fair amount of snow. I mean, and yeah. It was. It was a fair amount, and uh, we made it here, though. We did. <laughs> just Hill. barely. We, I mean, the, the kicker, too, was that we already had snow on the ground. So yeah. it was just adding to what we already had. It's kind of an insult to injury sort of really thing. Really, it is. It's the, it's the kick. And, <laughs> and this time of the year, you're pretty much, you're thinking spring now. It's time to put the winter behind you. Oh. You know, it's getting late February. And, yep. And, and things should be changing soon. But Oh, but the, no. The, no, the forecast is they're talking cold weather and possibly more snow later this week. So There's nothing scarier than the forecast oh, man. <laughs> not no. ghosts or goblins or bigfoots the weather's yeah. scary enough i'll tell you what jack frost is cracking his knuckles he's like <laughs> i'm not done with you yet <laughs> he must be related to leprechauns that was leprechaun-esque that's very that's ba- he, jack, jack frost is basically the cousin of a Gosh, leprechaun time flies though because it seems like just yesterday we were doing the um st patrick's st patrick's day, day yeah. episode from last year yeah yeah oh, and we gotta gosh. start talking about that for this and that's time. coming up quick it is i mean what three weeks yeah something like that yeah oh, I should, I should show you. get your greens <laughs> but hey i mean with all that we're back we're here we're ready to go and we're always uh like every episode we're gonna start off with uh recent sightings and i'm up to bat with this one so here we go Ooh. all right all right i got a humdinger of a recent sighting for you guys and as always uh Recent, we're going to use that term loosely. Sure. Uh, this didn't happen yesterday, but in recent years, um, a, a friend of mine passed along this article to me, and it, it comes from amp.reddit.com. And it, it's, this, it's this guy from a couple years ago who uh, it's written in a very kind of matter of fact kind of way, but he has been a search and rescue officer uh, for, for years. And along the way, he said he's seen some uh, really interesting things out in the out in nature, and he, he just wanted to share. So it's almost like a, um, uh, almost like a forum or kind of a blog or something. Yeah. But he, he kind of slapped this up on the internet and was like, "Hey, just dropping this here. Let me know if anyone else has seen similar things." And so it's a, just a couple different stories, and I'm gonna they're short, so I'm gonna read them and then we can discuss them. Okay, so the first article, the first little story here, I'm just gonna read it. This guy said, uh, I have a pretty good track record for finding missing people. Most of the time they just wander off the path or slip down a small cliff and they can't find their way back. The majority of them have heard the old saying, uh, kind of stay, stay put where you're at and they don't wander off far. But I've had a couple cases where that didn't happen. Uh, both bother me a lot and I use them as motivation to search even harder on the missing person's cases that I get called on. Uh, So the first one was a little boy who was out uh, berry picking with his parents. He and his sister were together, and both of them went missing around the same time. Their parents lost sight of them for a few seconds, and in that time, both kids were apparently wandered. They wandered off. When their parents couldn't find them, they called search and rescue, and we came out to search the area. We found the daughter pretty quickly, and when we asked where her brother was, she told us that he'd been taken away by the bear man. Whoa. She, the bear man. Uh, she said, she said he gave her berries and told her to stay quiet, and that he wanted to play with her brother for a while. That's creepy. Uh, the <laughs> last, the last she saw of her brother, 
Uh, he was riding on the shoulder of the shoulders of the bear man and seemed really calm. Of course, the, the first thought was an abduction, but we never found a trace of another human being in that area. The little girl was also insistent that he wasn't a normal man, uh, that he was tall and covered in hair like a bear, and that he had a weird face. So we searched the area for weeks, and it was one of the longest calls I've ever been on, but we never did find a single trace of that boy. The other um, was a young woman who... So in another case, a young woman was uh, out hiking with her mom and grandma, and according to the mom, her daughter had climbed up a tree to get a better view of the forest, and she'd never come back down. <laughs> they, they walked around the base of the tree for hours, calling her name before they called for help. And again, you know, when search and rescue uh, arrived, uh, we never found a trace of her. I have no idea where she could have possibly have gone because neither her mom or uh, grandpa saw her come down. Climbed a tree. That's bizarre. Gone. Climbed a tree, disappeared, was never seen again. Never climbed back down. Right. Never climbed back down. Oh, man. So, two stories there. Sorry we uh, transitioned so quickly between them. I thought those were uh, the same one. Um, so, first of all... Bear Man. Bear Man. Bear Man. Um, I mean, initially, I was thinking, what, Sasquatch? You know, is this a, I mean, is this a, a big Bigfoot abducting a kid? it almost sounded like... Did Bear Man actually speak to them? Well, did, apparently it did because he said that he he just wanted to, uh, he wanted to play with play. the boy, right? So, so yeah, but she said he had a weird face, covered in hair. He was tall, yeah, you know. But gosh, no matter. How, and I, I should have prefaced this by saying these are these are kind of scary because yeah. that, that kid was never seen again. You're right. Um, so, I, I mean, I don't know. That's. This is where it gets interesting because it's like the, when you talk about like told the kids, did he did he communicate with like spoken language or was it like that? Because there is a contingency of people who think that Sasquatch has some sort of like telepathic abilities okay. and communicate with the kids. Right. 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 Or they just kind of figured out by the way he was behaving like, hey, get on my shoulders. Right. Did the universal sign for piggyback? Like, get right. on, let's go party. <laughs> and that's when you say no thanks and you throw your basket of berries at him and run. Oh, dude, berry throw. Yeah. <laughs> well, in the tree story, you would think, number one, is there something up there in the tree that carried her off, maybe swung away to another oh, tree my or something? Goodness, yeah. Number two, she, did she find some kind of like a hole in the tree she crawled in and she was hunkered down in this hole? Ooh. Or number three, she would have fallen out of the tree, right? And they would have been able to find her that way. Yeah, I mean, you so, know. Well, and it had to be a big tree because they're hollering for her to come down. Obviously, they can't see her because she's so high up. And right. Um, but, I mean, unless she jumped to another tree, I, Which I, that's, I don't know. Yeah. It's it's almost in the realm of, you know, was there a portal or something? She disappeared into the into a different dimension, you know? Those dimensional, like, portal shift things are really interesting, like the more I, I've done my research, air quotes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's 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 this this idea that there are pockets all over our Earth that you know, just kind of open up to different different dimensions, and that she could oh man, just potentially have slipped into one. Gives you goosebumps. There's a twilight well, zone and it, about it's that. It's kind of creepy coming from a guy who is involved in search and rescue. You think they're pretty reputable sources, and even they don't have an explanation of what's been going on in these stories. Yeah. You know? That's the thing when you have people who who do have these like very hard science these type jobs and by them saying this stuff it definitely would put them in a negative light if they were telling the truth you know right. and it would come to bear pretty quickly <laughs> bear, yeah, bear, bear bear man <laughs> <laughs> bear man jokes <laughs> but uh, yeah so I mean and time and time again when it comes down to like UFO sightings and even stuff like this when it's somebody whose job it is is to be reputable and, and uh, accountable you gotta take that for what it is right like you can't right. oh, he's probably lying <laughs> it just, about this I mean yeah and it does it's almost like when a you know police officer reports it or you know something like that it just adds credibility to know that the source that it's coming from is a person who's on the up and up right. they're right. trained observers they're, they're, they're they specialize in observation and 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 you know being calm under pressure so right and they have something to lose if they're found to be either over excitable or lying correct you know? and they also kind of come from the point of view where they're out to debunk things yeah. they're out to explain things yeah you know they're they're looking for the reasons why things happen 
and they're not going to, um, I guess they're not going to fall for anybody's, you know, far-fetched story. They're going to look at it very logically. Yeah, they want the facts. Right. You know, bam. Just and so, facts, man. And these are people who are not ever recovered. Yeah. This is and, not and, no bodies, no nothing. In those cases, the boy that was carried off by the bear man was never seen again. And same with that girl who climbed the tree. They still to this day have never seen her again. Goodness. Yeah. Here's another one uh, where the person did survive and oh. was not uh, lost forever. Uh, so the author of this article says, I was teamed up with another search and rescue officer because we'd received reports of bears in the area. We were looking for a guy who hadn't come home from a climbing trip when he was supposed to, and we ended up having to do some serious climbing to get to where we figured he would be. We found him trapped in a small uh, crevice, or is it crevasse? Crevasse. Yeah, I'd go with I go with crevasse. Sounds fancy. Hey, I'm kind of a crevice guy. So. <laughs> he was found in a big crack, <laughs> and uh, poor did, guy had a broken leg. Did he break his mother's back though? <laughs> Gosh, <laughs> <laughs> we bring the jokes here. Sorry. <laughs> so he's stuck in a crevasse with a broken leg. It was not pleasant. Uh, he had been there for almost two days. His leg was badly infected. Um, we were able to get him into the chopper, and I heard from one of the EMTs that the guy was absolutely inconsolable and he kept talking about how he had been he was doing just fine and when he had gotten to the top uh, a man had been there he said the guy had no climbing equipment and he was wearing a parka and ski pants Ooh. he walked up to the guy and when the guy turned around he said the guy had no face oh, <laughs> no. where his face should have been it was just blank Oh. Uh, so the so the hiker freaked out and ended up trying to get off the mountain too fast, which is why he had fallen in the first place. And he said that um, he could hear the guy all night long climbing down the mountain and letting out these horrible muffled screams. Oh. And the author says that story bothered the heck out of me, and I'm glad I wasn't there to hear those noises. That's bizarre. That gave me legit goosebumps. Yeah. <laughs> And, you know, someone like that, you're wondering, well, he's stuck in this crevasse. Thank you, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Is he delirious? Is he kind of imagining these things where, right. where the guy has no face? But if... if That's what led to You would hope that if the... somebody came along and saw him down there, yeah. that they would have went for help and they would have identified who this person is in the ski pants and the, right. the parka. With, yeah. Oh, my God. It's all fun and games till the dude doesn't have a face. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Here's another one. There's just two more, okay? No, you're fine. This is great. Uh, one of the scariest things I've ever had happen to me uh, involved the search for a young woman who had gotten separated from her hiking group. We were out until late at night because the dogs had picked up on her scent. And when we found her, she was curled up under a large uh, rotted log. She was missing her shoes and pack, and she was clearly in shock. She didn't have any injuries, and we were able to get her to, the, to walk back with us to base ops. Along the way, she kept looking behind us and asking asking us why that man with big black eyes was following us. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> we couldn't see anyone, so we just wrote it off as some weird symptom of the shock. But the closer we got to base, the more agitated the woman became. She kept asking me to tell him to stop making faces at her. At one point, she stopped and turned around and started yelling into the forest, saying that she wanted him to leave her alone. She wasn't going to go with him, she said, and she wouldn't give us, uh, and she wouldn't give us to him. Uh, we finally got her to keep moving, but we started hearing those weird, some weird noises coming from all around us. It was almost like coughing, but more rhythmic and deeper. It was almost insect-like. I don't really know how else to describe it. When we were within sight of base ops, the woman turns to me, and her eyes are about as wide as I can imagine a human being could open them, and she touches me on the shoulder and says, he says to tell you to speed up, he doesn't like looking at the scar on your neck. Uh, uh, admittedly, I do have a very small scar on the base of my neck, but it's mostly hidden underneath my collar, and I have no idea how this woman could have saw it. Uh, right after she said that, uh, I hear that weird coughing right in my ear, and just about jumped out of my skin. Yeah, I hustled up to uh, her to I hustled up and and got her to base ops, trying not to show how freaked out I was. But I have to say that I was really happy when we left that area that night. That's bizarre. What? I mean, what do you explain that to be a ghost? That's a ghost. I man. mean, 
that's my first thought is that's, this that's, that's genuine what it sounds par- to me yeah. yeah that's not a sasquatch that's something paranormal that was out in the forest yeah telling them to hurry up mm. and they know these details about the guy that you yeah, know, like wouldn't would, be apparent otherwise, it sounds like. And she was responding like, no, I won't give them to you. Yeah, as if she was hearing this thing telepathically. Um, big black eyes. At least he had a face. I guess that's a plus. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> but Bonus points for face. Uh, that is insane. I, You know, the, and this is all from the same person. It's, who, all, it's all from the same person. Yeah. 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 It's, uh, Does it say where the person's from? Like where, where he works or he or she works? Give some credentials. Um, I could try to look for that, but um, I'm my my money's on Pacific Northwest. Well, I mean, I <laughs> yeah, just right? you know, I don't know. It could be. I almost picture like an Alaska type setting, but I'm just could making be. assumptions. You know, Alaska has the most missing persons, like per I think it per state or per capita or something. But it's really not a surprise. Um, it's just vast wilderness. Yeah, yeah. it's as, a very say, hostile wilderness. I, Unforgiving. Last, well, quite the last frontier. That's the state yeah. motto. But you have the kind of the smallest population, just yeah. about in the biggest state by 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 a mile, pun intended. He <laughs> and uh, I don't know. I I read once that a lot of people kind of have this like romanticized idea of moving out to Alaska and kind of yeah. resetting the you know hitting the reset button on their life, and that a lot of people move out there completely unprepared for what it is yeah. and that's a good chunk of the reason why you see a lot of missing persons is because they're like you know i'm gonna live in the forest and then they find out oh no <laughs> there's no lions here. and grizzlies and i don't have, <laughs> i don't have yeah. indoor plumbing <laughs> yeah it's winter nine months out of the year yeah uh it's, yeah it's interesting well, one last story that this author wrote uh he says this is the last one i'll tell and it's probably the weirdest story i have uh-oh yeah. Now, I don't know if this is true in every search and rescue unit, but in mine, it's sort of an unspoken regular thing that we run into. You can try maybe asking about it with other search and rescue officers, but even if they know what you're talking about, they're probably not going to say anything about it. So we've been told not to talk about it by our superiors, and at this point, we've all gotten so used to it that it doesn't even seem weird anymore. But on just about every case where we're really far into the wilderness, I'm talking like 30, 40 miles out there, at some point we'll we'll find a staircase in the middle of the woods. And it's almost like if you took the the stairs at your home, cut them out, and just place them in the middle of a forest. I asked about uh, I asked about it the first time I saw some, and the other other officer just told me not to worry about it, that it was normal. <laughs> Everyone I asked said the same thing, and I wanted to go check them out, but I was told very emphatically that I should never go near any of them. I just sort of ignore them now when I run into them because it happens so frequently. What? It's a staircase that in the middle of in the nowhere. middle of nowhere that leads to nowhere. And we don't go near them. We don't talk about them. Don't acknowledge them. Don't step foot on them. Uh, this is a common thing that they see, and so you know it's funny because like any other article, there's just a slew of comments, uh, tons. Like I haven't even gotten to the end of them. Hundreds of comments. And of people chiming in with their own opinions, and the thing that everyone fi- is fixated on is like, what the stair? <laughs> the, they're the, but stair- right. stair- what? what? Like this is a, it's a legit phenomenon. This is a thing. Yeah, it's a thing. <laughs> that there will be like a legit set of finished household stairs. Yeah. In the middle of some place, and the idea and the instructions is you do not go up those stairs. Right. And so some people are chiming in saying, oh, yeah, well, you know, back in the day, uh, you know, kind of frontier days, you know, sometimes people would just pick a plot of land and they'd lay down a foundation for a house and build the staircase and times got tough and they just moved on. But it, it just it does not fully because some of these places are so remote. They're you, so you far. You would think from, you'd also find the rest, find the rest of the foundation. Correct. Or, you know, and wood doesn't last that long. I mean, the Flat out. Yeah. You, you, you leave exposed stairs outside. This is outdoors, right? Outdoors, yeah. Outdoors in a forest, they're gone in 10 years. Yeah. And some of them might be concrete. I don't know. But, you know, so people are like doing Google searches on this and, and you know. I got to yeah. look this, this up. I yeah. mean, this is weird. Yeah. So We're maybe if we can find up. a picture, we'll slap a picture up in the. Stairway to heaven? <laughs> yeah. <Ooh. laughs> yeah. Or to uh, somewhere else. <laughs> I don't know. It's, uh, it's, it's bizarre. I don't know. My goodness. That would be even weirder if they went down, oh. like stairwell. 
That's so the question. <laughs> hey, listeners. <laughs> it just went down into like a, a into like pit. a deep dark pit. You saw some stairs just Don't winding down. down. Would you go down them? Not for a million dollars. Yeah, but. I put a slinky down them. <laughs> <laughs> go slinky, go. Go slinky, go. Attach a little GoPro to it. <laughs> yeah. Slinky goes to hell. <laughs> slinky Comes GoPro. back up. It's all red and on fire. <laughs> I don't you hear know. the slinky the slinky theme song plays. <laughs> slinky, slinky, such a wonderful toy. So. That's what you send up those stairs. That is crazy. Yeah, you've so. given me some more stuff to look up later on that. Well, yeah. it's it's funny because when I caught wind of this, I was like, and and I'm not the world's renowned expert on paranormal stuff. I'm into the paranormal. Wait, I what? like it. It's cool. I've heard what I thought was just about every weird phenomena out there. I had never heard of that one before. That's bizarre. So yeah, we're, we're going to be doing some research and maybe we can even pull off a main mystery on this. Someday that that we, would be kind of cool. We may have to, facts. that's a if we can really find some, great one. some more stories on that. So if we disappear for stair, a stretch, stair, stair pla- it, it, stairways in the wilderness, middle of nowhere. Yeah. Jeez. Well, better yet, we should go look for one. You know? It, yeah. So I think there's some in Eddie's that backyard. That. <laughs> My daughter's boyfriend up there. Go oh, check it out. <laughs> you'll, be fine. Fine. you'll be fine. You'll be good. I'll you'll put a rope fine. around your most, waist. Yeah. Most people come back. Don't worry, buddy. <laughs> but I don't know. If we don't post another episode for a while, it's probably because we went out looking in the woods for these staircases and never came back. So Ooh, no. Send out search and rescue if that's the case. We're, we're city folk. We don't do good in the woods. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a disembodied stair expert. <laughs> Stair master. So we'll yeah. let you sit on that and uh, marinate on that for a while. So that's that's your recent sightings, and hope you enjoyed that one. Nice. Thanks, Andy. It's time for Pop, Culture, and the Paranormal. Okay, so I'm going to start preparing us for the main mystery here with Ooh. pop culture and the paranormal well, main mystery warm and what we're talking about today is a tv series that ran uh, from 1974 to 1976 Ooh. and then lived on uh throughout the, 90s, the, yeah. the early 80s um and beyond oh yeah uh, in syndication, syndication. Yeah. and uh you most recently have probably seen it on the sci-fi channel or me tv this is the Land of the Lost. Marshall, Will, and Holly On a routine expedition Met the greatest earthquake ever known High on the rapids they Struck their tiny raft Plunged them down a thousand feet below To the land It's a til- children's television adventure show uh, where uh, the synopsis is a family falls into like another dimension or another world. I don't know how we got here or why, but I think we're in another world. What makes you say that, Dad? Well, because last night I saw three moons in the sky. Three moons? But how, Dad? There was a great earthquake and they were in a raft and kind of went down a waterfall and and... All of a sudden, they're living among dinosaurs and uh, strange um, other creatures that they encounter. So, yes. so this is more of like a survival type show. Yeah. Of uh, there's there's a father who was, um, um, I can't think of a uh, Rick was his name. Okay, nice. And then uh, the son who was you know like a teenage teenage boy, uh, his his name was Will. And then there was no. <laughs> It's Marshall. Marshall was his name. Well, no, the last name's Marshall. Sorry. I'm thinking the theme song now, and it's, it's all coming back. It's to coming me. in your head. <laughs> Marshall, son. Will, and Holly. It was Rick Marshall. Yes. His son, Will, and his daughter, Holly. And then so the three of them live in a cave, and they encounter dinosaurs. Um, some of the dinosaurs are friendly, uh, even become pets. Yes. Um, they come across a... Uh, a, a species called Pakuni, yeah, which which we all know and love, Chaka the Pakuni, which Chaka. <laughs> which is a short little, almost a Bigfoot looking creature kind he's of a like guy. He's like a mix between a Bigfoot and a caveman. <laughs> yeah, yeah, kind of deal. Yeah, he's like a cra- he's, he's Cro-Magnon hair- Bigfoot. Right, he's hairy all over, and except his face. What do you think he is? Some kind of a caveman, a monkey, or what? 
Um, and then, of course, Chaka has his own family. He's got a mom Pakuni and a dad Pakuni. Yeah. Uh, there's also the Slee Stack, which are like lizard people. And um, they they can't come out in the sunlight, but they kind of dwell in the caves and the yes. temples uh, near where the, the marshals live. And so they're always encountering them. They always run around with uh, really cool like slingshots. Yes. And, and uh, just terrified me when I was a kid watching this show. But um, so, yeah, I mean, so The Land of the Lost was was it was a fun Saturday morning TV show that that we watched when we were kids um, and has come on to. Uh, well, you were saying like in the 90s, there was a, a spinoff of it. Also, um, th- yes. this show was produced by Sid and Marty, Marty Croft, who yep. were pioneers in the children's daytime or. Saturday yeah. morning television. They had a lot of those shows. Yeah. They had like what was the one that was like insane? It was um HR Puffin oh, stuff. Oh, HR Puffin Ooh, stuff. That was that'll... very uh, out there. <laughs> yeah. Very psychedelic kind of 60s yes. vibe to it. Yeah. So uh, it, this was kind of more genre specific. They kind of wanted it, it was kind of like a cool balance of like the Swiss Family Robinson and and just that notion of like right. a, a normal family but who's in a crazy environment and yeah I, I remember seeing reruns of the original show like like you had said in the 80s and then in the early 90s they had relaunched it as a new like they'd reproduced it as a new show. Yeah, and I you know I was surprised to even hear about that. I you showed me some of the pictures and some of that stuff looked familiar, but yeah. by that time I was in college. And so, you know, I yeah, wasn't like, watching it. Yeah, whatever. But, uh, and then of course they, they came out in, uh, 2009, I think. Yes. Uh, with a, uh, there was a, a film version, yep. an actual big screen production of land of the lost, uh, starring Will Ferrell. Yes. But, um, I didn't, I don't, I've seen bits and pieces. I right. don't think I ever watched the whole thing. Yeah. And I think I did that on purpose because this was one of my favorite shows right. growing up. Yeah. yeah. And I knew, you know, with Will Ferrell, they were going to be making fun of the whole thing. Yes. It's just like, you know, I didn't want to go there, you yeah. know? Don't don't make fun of my child. Don't make fun of it. I did see the mosquito <laughs> scene, and it made me laugh pretty hard. Did you see that scene? <laughs> I don't mosquitoes? think I did. It was a gigantic mosquito. It was like the size of like a like a pterodactyl. <laughs> it was like an eagle sized mosquito, and it was perched on his shoulder. Yeah. And he's talking to somebody and doesn't see it. And then the camera cuts away from him as he's talking. I think it zooms in on Chaka, and Chaka's just looking at him with big <laughs> eyes. And it we might want to watch this. I don't know. And it cuts back to Will Ferrell, and his eyes are kind of droopy, and it pans out, and the mosquito is bloated full of yeah. his. Blood. And he's like, is anybody else tired? <laughs> so, so it was kind of funny. I heard, uh, I heard they get that big in Alaska, yeah. by the way. Oh, really? They, maybe that's what flew off with that, with that girl. That's right. <laughs> yeah, it was a great show. I always looked at Chaka as like that moochy kid neighbor that showed up and he's like, Yeah, oh, Chaka here comes Chaka there. again. Get some more berries. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was another thing. They were always collecting berries, and they'd be like these huge. All the food there was huge. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> oh, let's take these berries back. Oh, these will be good. And they're like the size of basketballs. You know. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Can't, are they a berry at that point? But but they were <laughs> they melon. they were always you know that was kind of the focus too of the show. They were always coming up with ways to provide for themselves in yeah. this this other habitat you know they they would uh they'd be collecting firewood or going down to collect water and they'd run into a dinosaur you know uh the t-rex was kind of their um their the main instigator uh his name was grumpy And so Grumpy would Real chase them. Right? Yeah, <laughs> they they ch- he'd chase them back to the cave, and they'd get out this thing. They call it the fly swatter. It's just this huge long log, probably I don't know, twelve foot log. Yeah, and they'd all three of them pick it up, run it straight at Grumpy, throw it in his throat, and he'd go growling and. Not again. Yeah. <laughs> and he'd go running off and they'd pat each other on the back and usually make some kind of a funny joke That's like, funny. well, he isn't going to like that for dinner or something good. like that. At least he got his fiber for the week. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> he won't poop for four months. <laughs> High five. <laughs> so, uh, Poor Grumpy. Grumpy. But yeah, I actually have it on DVD. Um, 
and they have uh, a couple episodes where you can listen to comments from the creators, you know, kind of discussing the show. So it's always kind of interesting. They have different stories about the production and, you know, behind the scenes stories of, of land of the lost and, um, just, just kind of a fun show about, uh, you know, another time, another place. And you never really understood where it was they were. Were they in the center of the earth? Yeah. Was it like a time thing? Yeah. Cause they played a lot w- towards like, it was like a time, um, it was a time portal. like slip, wasn't it? Cause yeah, didn't like even like spaceships show up at one point in time. Yeah. They, they the see show? spaceships and they, yeah. they'd see, um, even different types of beings would show up from time to time, like recurring characters. Um, and they would, um, they, they'd almost look like alien or, and this is where it was a very Croft type show. It was very kind of psychedelic, very, you know, for the time it was probably pretty good, uh, special effects, it but was groovy, you but say yeah, it. they, they were like, you know, sparkly looking people, just really weird special effects and, and camera tricks and things. Yes. And, a little bit of everything. You got yeah. aliens, you got little big foots, you got strap a saddle on a T-Rex. You so got cover all the bases. Those and, cross shows. Yeah. They were kind of out there. It was kind of funny because every now and then it seemed like it was almost like a Gilligan's Island thing where people yeah. would drop into the portal and they'd have like a story with these people. Then all of a sudden they'd find a way out and they'd get away. But, yeah. But the Marshall family was always still kind of still stuck, stuck there. there. Oh. <laughs> so it was very much kind of a Gilligan's Island kind of mentality to it. As I got older, I started to feel bad for the dad because like he had no contemporaries to hang yeah. out with. Like he just, had his kids just, and he's just, just kind of like staring out the window like, ah. <sighs> well, well, it's kind of funny too, because I think uh, the original dad was uh, Spencer Milligan, I think was his name. And he was there for the first two seasons. And then I think the guy got into a contract dispute where he wanted more money for it. Like, and he was just kind of tired with it as an actor. Yeah. He, he wanted out of it. Um, so he left the show and they brought in um, Uncle, I don't know, Uncle Jack or whoever it was. But so so the story went, well, dad found a way out. He left. Just you know, bailed on his kids? Well, he, I don't think it was intentional, but somehow okay. he like p- transported himself out. And then the uncle, and then the uncle came looking for him, looking for the kids and and the dad and and he found so he found the kids. That's hilarious. <laughs> they were high fiving themselves in the writers' room. Yeah. That one, they were like, "We did it." And we so for the it. third season, it was the uncle and two kids. You know, kind of replaced the dad That's character. So, so. <laughs> the kids are like, "We're in hell." <laughs> <laughs> but I remember there was one episode a guy like parachuted in, and like he came in on a parachute. <laughs> and somehow he got out too. And the seventies, man, yeah. they were just like the the continuity was just not quite there. They were like, there are no bad ideas. Parachute, yes, you're in. I love it. <laughs> Next, but school one, bus drives in. Yes, love it. But one of the actors, Wesley Ewer, was his name. Um, he uh, at the same time was also starring in, I think it was uh, General Hospital or Days of Our Lives. One of these. Um, See if I can find it here. One of those soap opera. One of those yeah. soap operas. I can't remember which one it was, but um, I, so he was starring in that during the week, and then he'd he'd also produce these Saturday morning shows. That's amazing. And at one point, he changed his name just to Wesley. Oh, so instead of being Wesley, your it was like a publicity stunt sort of thing, and I guess it went wrong for him. Like oh. <laughs> Like it didn't go so well for him. It was almost like he was trying to become like a Donovan or an Elvis oh, kind of a thing. Just go by his I'm first just going name. to go by Wesley. You yeah. Know? And apparently People are like Wesley who? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Cap- uh, Captain Picard's like, shut up, Wesley. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, he he was very much a kind of a heartthrob of the time. You'd see him on all the Teen Beat uh, oh, magazines, Tiger Beat, magazines. Tiger Beat mm-hmm. yeah. And uh, I think he even did, uh, you know, some singing and stuff, too. Of course he did. Yeah. You know, kind of the <laughs> David Cassidy sort of thing, you know. So, But he produced this show? Uh, I don't know if he was actually... He, he is a producer in Hollywood now, or at least oh, he was. I see, but he was on the show. Um, he was on the show. Uh, I don't know that he was a producer of the mm. show, but uh, he, he's gone on to be like... He's written some children's books and... Mm. Uh, done some music and you know acting and things like that. So Does he still go by Wesley. No, I Written think he. I Wesley. think he changed it. He, he decided that was just a bad publicity stunt <laughs> that he did. 
It's so. hard. It's hard when you nickname yourself. That's <laughs> yeah. The, <laughs> yeah, self-glossing. You it's know. not going to work, guys. <laughs> the artist formerly known as Wesley. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> What's yeah. his name now? It's still Wesley. <laughs> oh, cool. Cool. But yeah, that's... Uh, one of the things... One, oh, sorry. No, go ahead. One of the things I did notice was that it looks like the original Chaka. It looks a lot like Ron Howard's little brother. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know. I can see it. I can see it. <laughs> oh, man. I feel so bad. He does look like, like, like you said, Andy, like a cross between like a Bigfoot and like almost like a, like a gray alien with that like oval head. And yeah. It's just funny. Well, and it gave him kind of a weird complexion. I remember watching some of these shiny behind the stories type. Uh, well, watching watching the episodes with the the vocal tracks of the producers, and they were talking about and the actors, and they were talking about how you know being on the set, yeah. you know, they were still kids, and they had to go to school. So so like you're sitting there in costume being tutored, yeah, you know, between takes or whatever. So it's like Holly's going to school with Chaka. You got this little Chaka in your class, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know that makeup probably takes forever to put take you're st- out, you're put on and off. There, Chaka. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to do math. Chaka, want come on, recess. Chaka, let's go to recess. <laughs> Chaka want recess. <laughs> <laughs> Chaka love Howie. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what he's doing? Oh, poor Chaka. <laughs> So, yeah, I know anyway. in the movie they kind of made Chaka look like he had a couple of screws loose too. Like he, he was like kind of like a missing link kind of thing where yeah. he he wasn't like quite monkey, but he wasn't person. And like so some of the looks he gives is kind of like it's pretty funny. I like you said, I I don't like it. It's hard for me to like it when they take a thing that that you knew was a certain thing and they kind of like adult it up, air yeah. quotes, or or they change it enough where you're kind of like, oh man. Because it was an adult o- audience, the, the yeah. Will Ferrell thing. Was it was. definitely an adult audience. It was PG-13, wasn't it? It could have been. I think I so. Know. But yeah, I'm with you on that 100%. I mean, the, some of the jokes do do make you laugh, but but yeah, it's tough when you know you have a thing that like meant a thing to you and then they kind of tweak it a little bit, but... Yeah, I remember the 90s show, and I didn't watch it religiously, kind of like how you said you were in college. When they relaunched the new one, I was just starting high school, and it was, you know, you're just not watching, you know, rushing to the TV to go watch Saturday morning cartoons when you're in high school so much. And, and, uh, but I remember seeing it a couple, a handful of times, and it was, you know, it was totally like you said, like the effects were like era specific, they were well done for that time. And, uh, Chaka looked a lot more like a monkey than he did a, a, a person. I mean, he had kind of a, a very like um, ape look to him, uh, but similar exact. I mean, almost like part and parcel, uh, the exact same setup. Mm-hmm. It was a dad, his two kids, a boy and a girl, and they just like drove or they, they swam into this like yeah. rift, and it never really explained were they still on Earth, were right. they inside the Earth, where were they? It was kind of left up to your imagination, which I don't know. I kind of like that in a way. It doesn't like give you any hard fast rules. Um, it can be whatever you imagine it to be. Exactly. Mm-hmm. It's your paint with your imagination. <laughs> and then they had that little dinosaur thing, too. I, I uh, forget what it was called. Yeah, he was a, uh, it was like a little brontosaurus kind of thing yeah. that, that Holly basically used as a pet. Yeah. Um, she'd ride around on him and they'd use him to like pull a cart around, almost yeah. like a horse kind of a thing. Yeah. Um, yeah, what was his name? I, I want to say he talked. He, he was kind of like, yeah. no. Well, I mean, in the original version, good. he didn't talk. No, I but that. I mean, like the nineties. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. It, oh yeah, yeah. I, I think I know the character you're talking. They about, had to right? make these weird kind of like chipmunky noises. To, <laughs> and, yeah, so. <laughs> That's a pretty right. good voice there. Thanks, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> Practice that every night. Don't every you? night I slap myself in the face. Get it right this time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so. Good one, Pat. That was a good one to but, round up. Oh man! But um, hey, before you before we go though, before we move on, we want to talk about t-shirts, right? Well, you don't want to wander into the land of the lost with no clothing on. I mean, that's not going to help you out when you're being chased by dinosaurs and slee stacks and Chaka sitting there begging for berries. You're like, Chaka, I don't have a shirt on. <laughs> I got bigger problems, Chaka. Leave me alone. And if you're looking for a nice shirt, then... I happen to know a place you can find <laughs> one. Uh, right now, uh, we're taking orders. We can take orders for uh, new Paranormal Dads t-shirts and sweatshirts. Ooh. Ah. 
Uh, there's a post on our Facebook page. Andy's rocking one right now. Pat's Pat. wearing his. I had I had my sweatshirt on. I took it off because I got Ed, a little toasty. Eddie is presently <laughs> naked. I am <laughs> new to con. <laughs> And uh, um, I am not. <laughs> um, and uh, so, yeah, we have these shirts available, uh, $23 for a T-shirt and 33 for a sweatshirt. And it has this nifty kind of like camp, summer camp logo for Paranormal Dads. Kind of a silhouette of Bigfoot walking in front of the mountains. and At night. Spooky looking. And uh, yeah, so uh, if you live around uh, the uh, Omaha area, uh, uh, we could work out some sort of drop off, um, um, but if you'd rather uh, shipping, we can do that too. Uh, just, we just need to add five dollars uh, sh- for shipping and handling of that stuff. And if anyone out there gets a, a legit paranormal dad's tattoo somewhere on your body, Ooh. we'll just give you free swag for life. <laughs> if you get a paranormal dad's tattoo, I'll give you a free shirt. Yeah, every time we get something, <laughs> we'll do it. Uh, and you know, over time, we maybe would like to do like things like hats and stuff like that. But for here and now, we have shirts, and if you would like one. Just uh, message us on the uh, on our Facebook page and uh, let us know how many, what you'd like, and where to send them. Good so. deal. So we're about to get into main mystery here. Uh, just a general heads up in case you didn't know this. We do this with all of our episodes, but after you listen to the last song, you know, the, the, the theme, song, the, the theme at the song at the very end, if you listen past that, it's kind of like... Uh, watching past the movie credits where we uh, we slip in some bloopers and outtakes. <laughs> We've so, been doing that for a couple dozen episodes or so, and it's uh, it's kind of funny if you're looking for a couple chuckles to see how um, how often we we mess up and get off track uh, before recording. Tis true. All right. <laughs> so let's move on with the main mystery. And now it's time for the main mystery. <laughs> All right, here we are, gathered around. The lights are dim. It's cold outside. Pat, t- chocolate want berries. <laughs> <laughs> chocolate want berries. <laughs> and uh, we're talking about today as a main mystery: hollow earth theory. Dun dun dun. <laughs> Tied right into Land of the Lost. What is hollow earth theory, Eddie? What's hollow earth? Is that like flat earth? (laughs) Actually, no. It's different. Okay. (laughs) And it's like... Don't get Eddie started on the flat earth theory. (laughs) Well, I mean... Anyway. (laughs) I'm more more prone to the simulation theory than I am the flat earth theory. Like, you know what I mean? Like, that's like... uh, Whatever. As in, the flat earth is completely bogus? (laughs) (laughs) We're we're open to other people's ideas. (laughs) But I except for flat earth, we people. all feel like yeah, the flat earthers. That guy shot himself in the <laughs> rocket. Did you see what happened to him? He got so messed up. It came down. I think the I think the uh, the parachute, like the thing that was supposed to slow him down, didn't operate well, and he hit the ground at the same velocity, like faster than when he. Yeah, they were like he was in the hospital. Like it was had, a wily coyote kind of deal. It yeah. was, but he got like a he got yeah. what like twenty feet up in the air. I done seen it. It was flat as far <laughs> as I could flat. see. I seen it all. No, he got pretty high. I mean, he was like <laughs> he was like a hundred plus feet. Like, and then it just kind of like yeah, his acne missile just turned and pointed back to the earth, and he's like, oh no. So this is not that. No, this, this is, is not, not that. Hollow Earth theory. This is so hollow. for people who don't know, how would you describe that theory? The theory of Hollow Earth is a lot like kind of like an egg, where there is a crust, and that's where we live. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Science kids, we live on the crust. <laughs> uh, um, and and you know for scale, you know our the the eggshell where we live is super thick, right? So it's not like this is thin or anything like that. We've got a lot of crust. But the idea is that it is like an egg, like the Earth is, and there, there are, they're, they're, they're not discounting that there's a center to it, but that the center would be hot enough and uh, ambient enough to warm an environment uh, to keep it to a certain degree. And we do know that, at, you know. This is an interesting theory. I'm not saying Eddie buys it 100%, but it's super interesting. You're going to be like, guys, we're going to I got some real estate opportunities. <laughs> Here's the catch, it's inside the earth. Um, but like we work a lot with my job with mines and we do know that like with mines uh once you get down to a certain depth, it's, the temperature stays the same. It's like a constant 70 something degrees uh once you get like several hundred feet in, you know, it could be 
what it is now, like two degrees outside. But when you're that deep into the earth, the temperature just stays the same. Like the outside world doesn't affect it. So the idea of hollow earth is that there are cracks and crevasses <laughs> in, in the earth that are gigantic and not even like, all oh, little fissures and caves. No, like big enough systems that they're like entire ecosystems, like, yeah. like continent sized spaces inside the earth that have basically become pockets where other civilizations have flourished. Mm -hmm. and, and, and some of them, right. They're said to be like kind of, jungle like they're lush there's yes. they have their own animals their own species there's, yeah there's uh rivers and the whole night oh yeah they have yeah. their own ecosystems uh, some animals that we don't have here up on the surface um and kind of to your point uh, uh, some pacunis <laughs> <laughs> uh but also uh, dinosaur and maybe not dinosaurs per se but animals that would have been extinct on the surface actually are not or could potentially not be in this uh subterranean area the idea being well it must be dark right this is where you start kind of getting into some stuff i mean the belief in this theory is that there be uh the that there is a another source of heat and light inside of the earth that it's basically emanating light from the core and that that's enough light it's not like bright sunlight out here right. but it's like a dimly lit kind of room hmm. you know and that it's bright enough it's romantic it's romantic. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. romantic all the time, twenty four seven. But it's kind of like journey to the center of the earth, kind of. It's, it's it, a lot like that because that that concept from that movie was basically like a hollow earth concept, right? So yeah, so there was this era in human history where people were downright convinced that this was a real thing, and so Jules Verne, who who wrote Journey to the Center of the Earth, uh, was kind of like writing a story. Kind of, kind of, you know, you know, corralling all of these other myths and stories about a hollow Earth, but I, the contemporary thought was that Earth was hollow, and people kind of—I'm not going to say it was like bought, not bought, but like accepted by everybody. But it was certainly one of those things that was discussed pretty kind of frankly, like, oh, the hollow Earth, oh, cool, you know. Um, it gets interesting in this where you start doing the research of this, and this is where I kind of got down the rabbit hole was. There are, and this kind of ties, this is kind of funny with the paranormal stuff, because as you start peeling back layers, you start seeing some connective tissue between some of these stories. And indigenous people would report uh, giants, uh, tall, mm -hmm. extremely tall people with red hair, hmm. and they had slightly different skin complexion. Some would say it was kind of a greenish uh, hue, and that they lived in the caverns of the earth, and that these weren't dimly lit or like dank dark caves they were actually like ambient uh low lit um environments and so that the, these people of large stature would live in these areas that's where they're from and that was the the belief when we had our episode about giants yeah. people would witness giants and they'd see them go into these caves which yeah. are probably have the fissures which lead down to this lead down to this these areas yeah the how, how yeah. tall were the people who lived there reported to be because what if they were like pygmy people and somebody who's five foot five was a giant to them right <laughs> um, there was massive he's so tall uh the reports of these giants were upwards of 12 feet tall wow yeah. these were like giant 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 th giants. just the scale 10, is different feet, something yeah. like that yeah and that they had like really prominent uh red hair and and for the region that they were in i want to say it was south america like having not common red haired greenish hued skin people is just not a thing that happens a whole bunch and, right and so <laughs> pretty much never right um and then but then you start reaching back and there's more and more stories from other parts of the world about these l large statured people that would live in um, cave systems. There, there was a story in Britain about a little boy and a girl that were just found one day right outside of this cave system, and they were saying that they were lost. And the kicker was, was they couldn't really stand to be in the sunlight. And you've heard this, haven't you, Andy? And, and they didn't even speak English. They no. spoke an unknown language. Yep. Right. And they had a weird color to their skin. Yep. And uh, over time, the kids didn't know was how to get green. Back. Like they were green. They, they were green. green kids. Yeah. yeah. And one of them passed away. One died. One passed. And the girl they, grew up. They uh, what's the word? Assimilated her. Yeah. Into society, taught yep. her English. But they, they claimed to be from a land that didn't exist. And I'm, I'm drawing a blank on the name. But like, yeah. no one had ever heard of this place before. Correct. 
And the idea from this Hollow Earth theory was that these kids could have gotten lost on their little exploration from their Hollow Earth home and made it to the surface and were like, oh, crap, I don't know how to get back. Well, and that, that, that offers a lot of, I don't want to say credibility, but it, it makes you scratch your head because now it's no longer just a, a, a folk tale. Like, that's, that's fact. Like, yes. Those children were, were real. Found. It was documented. Mm-hmm. They were a different, their skin was green. And yeah. like, how do you explain that? It gets, like I said, guys, and then it, you start peeling back more layers. And there's this mountain in California called Mount Shasta. And there's a lot of weird happenings that go on. People have seen people exiting and entering the mountain, people wearing robes and all sorts of strange (laughs) raiments, and they just kind of disappear. They walk into the mountain and they don't see them again. And, you know, this is where like uh, um, aliens versus, you know, the idea being they were like, this could be a breakaway civilization that is, they were at one point, or they still are human in a way, but they just were a different. Um, not species, but a different uh, a race off, of offshoot. Yeah, yeah, and they just kind of were like, "We're gonna go live here instead." And um, so this is where it gets talk about credible. This is where it gets the credible part really comes to to bear here. Um, you guys have heard about this guy, I imagine, um, Admiral Byrd. Mm-hmm. Okay, um, so an interesting dude. Um, I'll kind of back this up. I'll start. I'll start with his name. I was wondering if you were going to go there with it. This is very interesting. So, yeah. so a lot of this centers around Antarctica, and and Antarctica, um, you know, we get into this discussion a lot, and this is where kind of the flat Earth people, kind of the the two kind of subjects, kind of meet because Antarctica, for hollow Earth enthusiasts, um, believe that one of the main access points into this hollow Earth kingdom or whatever you want to call it civilization is in antarctica um uh back in the day apparently uh not that the nazis being interested in something uh makes it credible but i mean it doesn't you don't you know you you sending that amount of resources to a place to go look for a thing you do, I mean... You do your homework before you do you're your going right. invest that much time and energy and human right. life to go find it. Exactly. I mean, you're gathering intel. Yeah. And so there was a massive, and not even just once, there was like a sustained um, presence of Nazi um, Germany in, Ant- in the Antarctic. Really? L- looking for, ost- ostensibly looking for access points into this hollow earth kingdom. Mm -hmm. And the idea was that, was that Hitler was obsessed with, uh, objects and artifacts from the ancient world. And that hollow earth would literally be like, pardon the pun, but the Holy grail of finding, you know, ancient secrets, you know, he was, he was obsessed with the occult and the paranormal in general. Yeah. Yeah. Anything that they can weaponize. Right. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Yeah. So this is in this framework, and I want to say it's post World War II. This is just as the world the war is winding down, and uh, Project Paperclip is a thing. And for people who may not know what that is, look that up. We may talk about that on one of our other episodes. Um, so in that in that vein, um, the U.S. and a coalition of of different countries are doing expedition and work in the Antarctic, and the ideas and articles are basically pointing out the Antarctic is a barren wasteland. There's no resources. There's nothing there. There's, And so for a sustained military presence to continue to be there, they, they, they allege that something was found. And that would justify the whole reason to send people there. This, I mean, we're talking about high winds, super cold temperatures, and there is no water. There's no food. There, I mean, there's food, but there's not, you know, I mean, no sustained food sources. Right. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's a big pain in the butt to go to the Antarctic. And to do that, you have to have something really worth being there. Um, and th- this does kind of double dovetail into another story I came across years ago about an under, under the ice pyramid that some people allege was found in the Arctic or Antarctic. Um, so there are the, the allegation is that there have been signs of advanced um, civilization and technology found in the Antarctic. So enter in Admiral Byrd, who was a completely straight-laced, like some people even said boring 
guy. Like he, he gave accounts of his flights. Like he would do a journal for his different flights all before this. Like he was a world war two pilot, uh, wrote a few uh, novels and even about his experiences in the war and the critique on the novels were, they were kind of boring. They were a little dry. He's They're a, just factual. Yeah. Right. Yeah. He's a very straight kind of by the book guy. He didn't embellish a lot. He just kind of told the story as it was, you know, he didn't set it up. There I was behind <laughs> enemy lines. <laughs> See the whites of those krauts. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Saw their eyes. Uh, it, uh, it wasn't that. He was a very, like they said, it was almost methodical. And yeah. it was they weren't very good reads. So this so guy. So again, like we were saying earlier, it's a credible source, which helps the story from the get-go. With a lot to lose. Yeah. I mean, he's a highly decorated pilot. I mean, there's a lot going on here. And this is right in the era of post-World War II. So, you know, not that we were alive then, but we all know that the sentiment about, like, you know, pilots and and soldiers and spacemen, it was all like, that was kind of like the pinnacle. Like, little boys were like, one day I'm going to be a pilot, you know? And so, <laughs> and so, like, this guy had a ton to lose if he was being overly embellished or if he was lying and so and his track record bears out that he's just not that guy so he goes on this expedition in the uh antarctic and he comes back with a story that'll curl your hair i mean it's it's crazy and the part the funny part about it is he didn't actually tell the story at first he kind of hinted at it he kind of said things like one day i hope to find the um the the hidden the hidden earth or something like that uh, in a talk show, he said that I hope to find the hidden realm or something. And then, as he got older, it's a classic like deathbed confessional kind of thing. He completely with it, like not like gone and not like you know in and out of you know, like awareness. He was totally like a, aware of what he was saying, uh, conf- not confessing, sharing with his grandson apparently the story of the things that he saw. And basically, he said, "I was told to shut up. I was told." You don't tell people this. This is such high class, high, high classified stuff. We will ruin your life. Like, is, you do not share it. And he goes, and he was torn between what he had experienced and his sense of duty to the uh, U.S. government. Like, I can't, like, look at my career. Look at what I've done. I, I, I can't. They're saying that don't talk, so I shouldn't talk. So did he ever say what he saw? He did. So what did he say? <laughs> Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> he said, "Chalk and want berries." <laughs> I was gonna say, Eddie, you're the opposite. You you do jazz it up with some emotion, and you you set it up just right. <laughs> Eddie's dry and doesn't tell any. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. no, you're the opposite. I of got that. you on the edge of your seat. <laughs> <laughs> so he tells his grandson, as he was flying over the Arctic, he was attacked by what he can only describe as UFOs unidentified flying objects. They were high-speed, high-maneuverable aircraft. They flat-out attacked him. Then his, uh, or they basically surrounded him, swarmed him, a kind of aggressive style. And then at one point, his plane, he lost control of his plane as if it was taken over by what we would call a tractor beam now. Mm -hmm. And it takes a hold of his plane and basically arrests it in the air and then lowers it, pulls it down into an opening, into a giant, not giant, but to a hole in the earth pulls it in and lowers it down amongst these people. There's people and there's buildings and streets and trees. But uh, his, his description of what he saw was that all the architecture was built into the landscape. It was all very kind of like picture like Lord of the Rings style with the elves. I kind of just yeah, built it right. into things and, and that he was approached by essentially the ruler of this civilization who was tall in stature, humanoid, but had a slightly different color to his skin. Uh, he didn't, I don't recall if he said it was greenish. I, I, I don't recall that part of the story. And this is Paranormal Dad, so I don't have any notes in front of me. <laughs> this is Eddie. Not, <laughs> I do, my notes are very scribbly. Um, and this ruler introduced himself and basically showed him um, ostensible their kingdom. I mean, not all over the place, but kind of just demonstrated what they were and what they had done, who they were and filled him filled his brain full of these facts and basically said that they were because they're an advanced civilization inside our earth and uh and sidebar this isn't like like pulled down to the middle of the earth like the middle of a basketball this is like i said like picture like 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 random naturally formed fissures and cracks and it's just gigantic open spaces i mean Mm. You know, they were saying the earth surface area is so big. Think about inside the earth. You could have entire vacant pockets as the size of, 
half of the United States, and you wouldn't, yeah. What, um, what did it look like? Did it was it lush and green? Was it yeah. deserty? What? What kind it, of uh, landscape? Because obviously it wasn't cold. Super temperate environment. They yeah. said uh, a constant kind of like a 70 something degrees. It wasn't too hot. It wasn't too cold. Uh, lush green. Uh, the air was almost like a, they said it had like a sweet smell to it. There was a, a general warm glow of, from the quote unquote sun. But uh, the best uh, from what I got from my reading was that it was all ambient kind of light from the core. Uh, um, and... Uh, and that you know, different different plants, slightly different animals. Some of the same animals. I mean, you'd see rabbits and deer and stuff. And so, it's it, it it was like Earth, but slightly different, or like the outside of Earth, but slightly different. Yeah, that's. that's weird. And he saw kids weird. and families and people and whole lives being led. And then they they uh, uh, the ruler of this uh, people. And this is where once again, I don't recall if they told him what they called themselves. Um, this is where. T- you know, look this up yourself, people. Come on. <laughs> um, but there was this uh, statement of, we know who you are. We have, obviously, our technology is w- way ahead of you guys. We monitor all your communications. So we're well aware of who you are. We're, we know of your war record. We know you're basically an admirable guy. So we're letting you go. That was right. about the extent of it. <laughs> nice. Yeah. yeah. We the know you're monitoring <laughs> our communications. We're oh. going to be a little overwhelmed nowadays. With right. Twitter. And right. And all this stuff. Oh, man. Jeez. And so um, the idea was that uh, the communication was that they know about the surface people and that they will at some point let everyone know they're here, but not yet. And that was kind of the point. And it was almost like basically like UFO alien stuff, but mm-hmm. that they're not out there. They're in here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's, it's very interesting. And he <laughs> told his grandson all of this uh, before he died. And um, it was just a, it was an, very interesting story. And a lot of those stories, the, uh, the, well, the things that he experienced, corroborated some of these broken myth stories that we hear about these strange people that are just kind of like discovered and then vanished. Or like in the case of those kids in England, were unable to go back. Yeah. But it's just, a, it's just, it's very much kind of fire, fire for the imagination for sure. Oh well, yeah. When you take someone who's got, you know, a known personality or a record like Admiral Byrd and put them into the equation and say, you think, well, this is a pretty grounded person and yeah. this is what he's saying. Right. It's got to make it wonder. Yeah. 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 Well, and not just that, but it's so detailed. It's so specific. It's such a long story that it, it either happened or it's completely bogus. This is not a misidentified. No. Ca- you know, because yeah. like nothing against Bigfoot or anything, but you see a Bigfoot in the woods and sometimes it could, oh, it could be a bear. It could be misidentification yeah, rather than someone poor trying photo, to, you know, yeah. poor photo. But this either happened or it didn't. Right. And if it did happen, that rewrites everything that we thought we know about our world. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I mean, I mean, I don't even know. I mean, I guess you could maybe say he's hallucinated the whole thing, but that once again, it, it either happened, either he's lying, he's mistaken, or it happened. Right. And it's one of those stories like, and this is where it gets hard, right? So you read this and it challenges everything you know. And this is where, it, and this is where I don't want to give flat earth people more credit than <laughs> they're due. But, but, you do think about the things that you quote unquote know. And this is kind of like the kind of the guts of this show, if you think about it, other than being wholesome high five and dads. <laughs> high five. <laughs> <laughs> um, that a lot of the things we know were told. Right. You know, like I can't prove to you certain things because I don't have the equipment or the expertise to show you the distance from the earth to the moon. I don't know. I'm yeah. trusting that someone else is telling me the truth. And so in a lot of cases, and you know, this is where like observed evidence is always hard. Like, well, well, well what, what do your eyes tell you? Well, my eyes aren't great. I have to wear contacts. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so like, I get it like, Ooh, you don't know because you, you know, do you know the earth is round? Have you seen it from space? It's like, okay, now we're having that talk. But, <laughs> but I do agree uh, to some extent, like a lot of the things we know are because we are only able to do so much in our little patch that we live in. And so hollow earth, I mean, how are we going to find a portal or a not portal, but an entrance into this place to just to prove or disprove it to ourselves, you know? Yep. 
Which brings me to my next point. We need to go find this place. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking the same thing, man. Exactly. <laughs> We're not going to know until we try. Oh, my gosh. So the idea, so some of the other uh, substantiating stuff to this, and this is a lot of what kind of UFO people do uh, and that you know I've done as well, but it is something bearing, like it has a lot of weight. So you can't just go to the Antarctic, right? So if we wanted to right now, we could buy a plane ticket and go pretty much anywhere on the planet we wanted to go. You know, if you have enough money and the time, you can go there. You cannot go. You to the literally Antarctic. can't go. No, unless you're government. You, you got to get so much clearance. And there's been people who've gone. Mm-hmm. And this is where like there have been people who've gone. I get it, but it's a tiny, tiny group. Yeah. And when they go, the Antarctic is big, and you're not going to go to a specific spot. You're, you're going, going to an outpost someplace that the, exactly the, has already been established and mm-hmm. has very controlled conditions. Yeah. And the environment isn't such that you can be like, hey, guys, I got I'm going for a walk. I got the weekend (laughs) open. I'm going to go check out some stuff. Go explore. I'm going to go die in five minutes because I (laughs) breathed the air outside. And so the my lungs to liquid. Oh, gosh. Actually, (laughs) technically, wasn't a few weeks ago, Chicago and certain parts of the country are literally colder than Antarctica. Right. With, Which, that, with that negative, was it negative 80 wind chill or something yeah, like that? Yeah, people were frost, were, were getting frostbite on their tracheas because they were breathing in through their mouths. Oh my gosh. And they, they were warning people, don't breathe through your mouth, breathe through your nose, or don't even go outside yeah. because you were going to hyper... They were literally freezing their internal organs from oh breathing God. in. And it's so, like that movie, The Day After Tomorrow, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. where that <laughs> fog gets you and you just freeze like a popsicle. It is. <laughs> But yeah, it was crazy. So that's what happened when you go searching for holes in the middle of the earth. You can freeze your lungs, guys. Uh, But yeah, so I mean, you think about it, like you can't just go looking for this place. Not so much the only access point, because the whole point is like there's several access points to this. uh, And there could be offshoots of offshoots, you know, like like England, like those kids, if they came out of one in England. Yep. That's a that's a safer place to start. So if we're going to go look, let's go to England. Let's go to England. A little more temperate. (laughs) Now, if we really, and this is where listeners, you can look this stuff up too. Uh, there are like databases of these areas where some of these entrances are alleged to be. The only kicker is that to get, like they're, they're, they're saying like some of these journeys would take you 72 hours. You know, you're going to be 72 hours spelunking to get to the, yeah. uh, to, to these things. <laughs> Bring a couple granola bars. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Bring a change of two socks. hours of spelunking. I, yeah. I don't know. I could handle that. Which you would think if two children made their way out in England, it's got to for every access point that's like kind of perilous. There's got to be a handful that are totally chill. You know, like oh, it's an easy stroll. Um, because these kids weren't spelunking, you know. Yeah. <laughs> um, but so there are there are like articles and places you can look up to go see where you want to go. But e- even then, you got to be careful, man. You can't be looking up some random place on the internet and be like, "I'm going to go look there." <laughs> <laughs> it's some guy's basement. Yeah. Don't do it. It's a bad idea. <laughs> but uh, but but yeah, I mean, the whole point is that all over the planet there are these uh, openings that allow you to get to these um, under underground deep underground um civilization so it says hollow earth it's not so much like an egg per se but there are going to be it's more maybe like uh like an ant farm yeah yeah right. that's a good yeah. that's a good way to put it yeah and and it's thoroughly fascinating and uh i don't think i'm done visiting this topic yet because there's more to probably peel back at some well, you point. know that's what the show's all about monsters myths and mysteries yes. this is certainly a mystery that's man sure. i love it it's yeah the between the credible witness and the fantastic story and also the fact like i said like you are forbidden from getting there and the idea being well because it's for your own safety but you know people aren't just breaking their necks to get to antarctica it's a hostile place yeah. And the uh, the thought being they're trying to hide something. We should we should test it out. Just call your local travel agent. Yeah, I'm thinking about taking a trip. Okay, where you want to go? Eh, about Antarctica. Got anything around that neck of the woods? Anything. I want to. <laughs> I, I want the Admiral Bird package. <laughs> <laughs> Give him the bird. They probably send you to Brazil and say hey, that's about as far south as you can go. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's. It's very interesting, and uh, it's what, funny. What's the tip down there in South America? Is that Brazil? Is that tip, like uh, the, b- b- the very b- b- oh. furthest south you could go? Not sure. I think so. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know my South American. Yeah. We don't have our map. Well we don't have our globe have out our here. Globe out. We're paranormal dads. We're not geographic We're dads. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we need to get a world map on this wall. 
But 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 yeah, anybody who's interested, I would say you look up Admiral Byrd, go from there, yeah. and the story just gets weirder and weirder, <laughs> and it is something else. I tell you what. That's, that's cool. A, that's a good one. Love it. Thanks, Eddie. So fun. Thank you. Well, hey, be sure to check out Paranormal Dads on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram, and also uh, our website, www.paranormaldads.com. Drop us an email at paranormaldads at gmail.com. Let us know what you think about the show. Uh, any ideas for show topics? Um, also, please review the show. It helps us a lot. Uh, gets our name out there. Get more listeners. And um, that that's how we really can get the ball rolling on some of these projects like our, our future trip to Antarctica. Ooh, uh, we're yes. going to need a lot more hits. So if uh, people can give us some reviews, we'd very much appreciate it. I can... I will do it. We'll do a T-shirt. How's that? We'll do it. We'll do a. We, we will do a a a Hollow Earth Paranormal Dad's T-shirt <laughs> if we can get to that. Holes point. included. Big old <laughs> hole right in the middle of the shirt. <laughs> it's not a hole. It's Hollow Earth. <laughs> oh, all right. Oh, oh special thanks to uh, FreeSounds.org uh, for uh, usage of these fun sound effects that help help with the storytelling, and uh, and then until then, stay warm, everybody. Welcome to episode 30 of Paranormal Dads. I'm your co-host, Eddie. <laughs> you didn't do it. What? I wanted to emphasize. <laughs> you, you emphasized all right. Oh, I lost it. <laughs> Quiet. Quiet on the set. All right. Should I emphasize it still? It's good, right? Why is it? I'm going to lose it again. Oh, okay. I won't look at you. All right. Do look at you. Red leather, yellow leather. <laughs> Welcome to episode 30 of Paranormal Dads. <laughs> should I not? Should I not emphasize? <laughs> okay, I promise I'll keep it together. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Um, serious. Here we go. Welcome to episode 30 of Paranormal Dads. I'm your co-host, Eddie. I'm Andy. And I'm Pat. And welcome as we... I can't... It's been too long! It's been too long! Join us. Join, Join us. us. Join us. Right, we got it. Here All right, go. ready? Chocolate like Chocolate love, what's her face? Chocolate love, Harry. <laughs> <laughs> Chocolate oh, no. and Harry.